is the Emergency Medical Minute. All right, so what I wanted to talk about briefly was RSI medications. Okay, there's different ones we give. There's usually two, RSI is really two drugs, right? You have your induction agent, you know, it's your sedative, and you have your paralytic agent. Most times we give, what, succinylcholine and atomidate. That's very common. And the reason we choose those commonly is because they're very uh, quick on and relatively quick off. Uh, so that if we have a complication where, you know, we can't intubate, we get in there and we can't see them, um, the paralytic will wear off fairly quickly and they can start breathing again spontaneously by themselves. But occasionally we don't give those medications. So normally the sequence we would do is we would just automate first uh, and then we give followed by succinylcholine. Now succinylcholine is the only one, it's, cons- it's called a depolarizing paralytic. Um, that's, that's why they kind of do those fasciculations and shake and everything. Um, that's the only one that does that. And that's how you know really that you know, when they're ready to go is once the fasciculation stop, they're ready to go. That one, we like it because it's really quick on. I mean, within a minute, they're basically fully ready, they're fully ready to intubate. Um, the downside of that is, is that in some patients, it's, you cannot do that. It's uh, hyperkalemia patients, renal failure patients, patients with burns, uh, patients with... Um, if you suspect any kind of hyperkalemic state, patients that have neuromuscular disorders like muscular dystrophy and stuff, you do not want to give that to them. Uh, you can actually kill them. So we don't want to do that. So in those cases, we usually use like something rocky uronium is the most common one. There's different, there's different non-depolarizing paralytics, rock uronium, pancuronium, vecuronium. Uh, rock is the most common one we use because the onset of action is relatively close to what... Um, we give for uh, succinylcholine. It might take a, maybe, maybe a minute or so longer than uh, than sucks. The, di- the disadvantage of that is also that just the onset of action is a little bit longer. It's about ten minutes as opposed to sucks is usually worn off in about three to four minutes. Um, so we have, to, we have to manage it longer if we couldn't get the tube for some reason. But because the onset of action is a little bit longer, um, a lot of times some docs will uh, want you to give actually the atomidate first. Uh, sorry, they'll actually give you give the uh, rock uranium first, followed by the automate after that, because the automate um, usually kicks in with about a minute, um, and so the and the rock uranium takes a little bit longer. So sometimes we'll just mix them up a little bit. Certainly, like vec uranium, you give it, it takes about like eight to ten minutes to kind of set in, but it lasts an hour. Uh, so we rarely will ever give vec uranium for intubation, but usually give that if we're going to paralyze them like long term for. If we're doing like hypothermia treatment, post arrest, something like that, then you don't want any shivering. Then we'll do we'll do a vecuronium for that because it's just it's much longer acting. Uh, other ones we'll use is ketamine. Ketamine is great uh, for induction agent, particularly with uh, those who have bronchospasms. So if you have an asthmatic that you're going to be intubating, consider that uh, having ketamine available and seeing if the doc wants to do ketamine. Um, that's definitely it actually has some bronchodilation properties. And it's better for that. Plus, if we, if, we, if we anticipate a very difficult airway, sometimes we'll just do a kind of an awake intubation. So we'll actually just give them ketamine uh, and then get down there, make sure we can see the cords. And then we'll do either paralyze them or just try intubating without the paralytic. But uh, the advantage of that is that they usually will breathe through it. Whereas automidate will make them stop breathing. Ketamine, they'll usually breathe through it. Um, that's all I have. Any questions? Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.